1915, the Reverend Thompson took over the parish of St Andrews. A year after he'd taken over the post, he got a phone call and they'd discovered a letter dating back to 1855, uh, making provision for a Presbyterian boys' school. And the first school was established in 1916, not on the present site, but in fact, the site today of Hagley Community College, which is just around the corner from where the parish church of St Andrews was. But within two years, it was urgent to find more accommodation. Things were expanding and growing at a phenomenal rate. It was found here in what was then open countryside, in a property known as Strowan. 28 acres were bought for £17,000 and St Andrews College was fairly launched on its way. In the Depression years, from about 1930 to 1934, finances were a constant worry. This monster fate raised the princely sum for those days of £1,642. The fate, if you like, of the college rested in that. That was the difference between the gates at 347 remaining open and not. And then we had the disruption of the war period. Many of our old boys served with sacrificial valour and distinction in the armed services during that time. Some 62 of them lost their lives during that war. My parents brought me here by horse and gig. And certainly uh, St Andrews has moved on a lot since then. Very few pupils in those days, but it's grown and grown and grown. To be the successful rector of such a college requires a somewhat remarkable person. He must be part psychologist, part administrator, part academic, and a man able to inspire and transmit enthusiasm. I must also mention the members of the staff of St Andrews College. We have a small staff, but we always seem to get on so very well with them, a great crowd of masters. I think one lady only on the, on the staff, Mrs Pocock, uh, we loved her and I, I think she was very fond of the boys as well. It was a, a great atmosphere in those days. I've seen many changes in the buildings. These have been aimed to replace old wooden buildings with buildings of permanent materials. And it is now our turn to provide for those who are to follow us and to maintain St Andrews College. The whole family of St Andrews, working together, have provided the preparatory school. There's an ethos around people and connections uh, and being happy at school. Our job is to allow everybody to be the best that they can be, whatever the area of, of passion or talent is, and I think that that's been a real hallmark of St Andrew's education right throughout the years. The building of the Agricultural Laboratory and the introduction of the Agricultural Commerce Option were moves to keep abreast with developments in teaching philosophy and agricultural practice. pipe band is really special and the culture within that uh, produces success really. To win the World Championships was a major, not only for the college here, it was the first uh, World Championship that uh, any New Zealand band had won. When the St Andrews College Mountain Lodge was opened on May the 1st in 1965, by the Honourable J.K. McAlpine, it brought to fruition the vision and the labours of many people. A place where groups of boys could be taken for specialised training in surroundings both beautiful and health-giving. 
At a boys' college, it is of course inevitable that certain escapades will take place from time to time. Uh, as you can see in assemblies and all the different events that go on, nothing is too crazy or bold or bizarre. You can dress up in crazy costumes and do things that might seem silly or, or risk-taking, but you're in a very supportive, safe environment to do that here and to take those risks, and that's really set me up um, to live creatively and boldly since leaving. The music suite, presented to the college by Sir Robertson and Lady Stewart, sits amid the trees of the college and has a special atmosphere for the creation of music. Obviously the cultural aspects of the college, um, second to none really, gives you a taste of everything and it's really, really special. I guess I like the uh, sport out on the playing field <coughs> uh, more than the classroom. There was a lot of emphasis on the first 15, of course. I mean, they were our heroes. You made that first tackle. Don't let anyone else do it today, boys. Bring it south, OK? Start on you. You lead the team today, OK? Keep going for each other today, boys. Play for each other. Play for the old collegiate. Play for the history, boys. We were so proud to be representing the school and to beat Boys High at yeah, Boys High yeah, yeah. was so great. Yes. The desire and the passion to, to play for the Thistle has always been there for the hundred years. They're the custodians of the shirt and they want to leave that Thistle in a better place when they move on or they want to respect those that have gone before us so it, it does mean a huge amount. St Andrews is a place that's embraced change freely and well. Dr Rental's vision for co-education, certainly in the, uh, in the senior school, preparing young men as they were at the time, or young boys, for the real world, and I think you can look back now and say that was visionary. I think at the time, he came up against very stiff opposition. I'm totally against the uh, proposal, Mr Chairman. The boys themselves need a break away from girls, the distractions of girls. It's not good enough. It can't happen like that. He knew what a really good co-educational school could look and feel like, but he had to go through a pretty significant period of pain to get his vision accepted. It was quite nerve wracking going in there, and you obviously had some boys that weren't keen for the girls to come. But I think during the year they all got to see the benefits of it and I think some of the ones that really opposed it ended up with girlfriends at the school so I don't think they could complain too much anymore. Oh initially, I, I, being a non-conservative I suppose, I, <laughs> I didn't think of it a very good idea uh, but I can see now it's, 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 it's worked well. It's a, a tremendous asset for the school. There would certainly be no doubt 
that it has been the single most thing that has allowed the college to grow, that has contributed to this amazing, vibrant and inclusive culture that uh, we enjoy today and certainly brings a whole new energy and flavour to the school, um, which is uh, very exciting. I've been here long enough now to see the children come in as now sort of two or three year olds into the preschool and coming out the other end as 18 year olds. Uh, and they all seem to be very well adjusted, good with people. There's just something about the experience I think that you, you get here that encourages you to stay together and keep in touch and actually value those relationships. You know, we want people leaving here you know, socially and emotionally at ease. We want them to have grit, resilience, to be nice people. Christchurch and the school, I suppose, in the 19, late 40s and 50s was monochrome in my memory. And suddenly we had colour, and colour came with 10 or 12 Pacific Islanders who came to board here. And suddenly our horizon widened. Great sportsmen, and um, I can hear the uh, the laughter they brought. And, uh, and the singing. And the singing. Remember the, the, the concerts the we had, yeah. the Borders concerts? Well, boarding's, I think, is vastly different today than it was. It really was a place where boys brought up other boys. Uh, fairly traumatic for students in those days. Communication with home was irregular. Leave was even less so and a lot, lot has changed since then. It's become a, a much more of an environment, much like home. And I think the matrons had a huge role to play in, in, that, in that regard. And I remember Mrs Needham, who was the, the matron, and uh, little things like being invited into a flat for a waffles after the, you know, the second night we were there. These are things that, although it was a waffle to her, um, they help you bed in. Les Stewart was our rector. He talked a lot about school spirit and uh, an, an enlarged family and, uh, you know, just supporting each other, and I think there was that. When I was in fourth form, so 14, my father passed away, and uh, the, the, the college community, and that was the teachers I had, but also those boys in boarding, they gathered around me, and by the time I'd left four years later, they were my family, they, they'd, they'd been there with me. I mean, one of the reasons I came back as a teacher um, wasn't because I couldn't leave, it was that I didn't, I didn't want to not be a part of this. It's been such a huge part of who I am. It's something which is peculiar to this school. It was the friendly atmosphere, it was, it was home. It was home for me. And so it feels like a happy family. And that's what it is. I am in awe of just what is produced from this school. It's just that lovely naturalness. That's what has, has impressed me. I just hope that we never ever lose that. Look at that, just opening up. The, the enduring experience strengthened the place. Um, amazing uh, tolerance, patience, change, uh, and, and that's evident in, 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 in the, I think, even, even now. Despite all the challenges, despite the borders having to go down the road and motels and being displaced for two years, I don't think any families left us during that time. And um, that, that really made you feel very, very good. We went through some fairly tragic times even after the earthquake. And when we didn't have a sacred place to go to, to just reflect and just to be and to set up a place, a memorial place where students could come and plant a candle and just be, there's something special about being able to go over to a sacred space. 
I loved that chapel with a passion. And every time I drove up the drive, I, I, again, because Graham had worked to, with the fundraising, and we were married here, and our boys were married here, the children are christened. And with just being here, sometimes just quietly on my own during the, during the flowers. It was the saddest, saddest day when it had to come down. My personal view was, okay, it was damaged, but it was also no longer really fit for purpose. It wasn't big enough. We decided that we would be brave and see whether we could build another one. You know, there's no one in the high school here that's been in the old chapel. It's five years ago, so it'll become quite special to them in time. How many years it is since I was at this school? No, how many? 76 years ago, I left here. I shall gladly open this centennial chapel in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. To hear the, the organ and the pipes on Tuesday, well, I'm, I don't think there was a dry eye in the house. I know I wet buckets. The new one says something about St Andrew's faith in the future. It's also a celebration, you know, it's a hundred years. We can be honest and respectful of those memories and we can have something that is a celebration and steps us into the next century. I've had immense pride of being part of St Andrews, quite yeah. frankly. Yeah. Well, I think the Reverend Thompson would be absolutely delighted.